Hello, my name is Nick Debra, and obviously I'm not in my home office. I'm actually in the UK delivering workshops right now. But I wanted to make this video, a uh, short video, about why I don't use gauges. Uh, and so you've probably seen graphics like this in dashboards in the past. Maybe you've even created dashboards that have these. Sometimes people call them speedometers, but I'm going to call them gauges uh, in this video because usually in, on business dashboards, the metrics we're showing don't have anything to do with speed. And in principle, these are uh, useful, right? They're a good idea because they give the audience an idea of essentially how to feel about this metric. Is it doing well? Is it doing poorly? Because often they kind of lack the background knowledge to make that assessment uh, themselves. And so a uh, gauge tells them, okay, well, if it's in this range, then it's you know doing poorly, or if it's in this other range, it's doing well. If it's in between, it's satisfactory. Like I said, in principle, a good idea, but of course on dashboards, we don't uh, just have one metric. We typically have a bunch of metrics and that's where Hopefully you can start to see where some of the issues or concerns that I have come in, which is that they're just very visually busy, right? On every gauge, we always have to have those red and gray and green zones, which means that, uh, like I said, um, you know, we're going to have a pretty busy dashboard. And so this means that it's going to be slow to visually scan. And so, and obviously people are scanning our dashboards on a frequent uh, basis, daily, uh, even in certain cases. And so that's really a problem. I typically use uh, an alternative called Action Dots. I, I sort of uh, developed this a number of years ago. And this is actually showing the same data as those gauges that we were showing before, but obviously you can tell that it's a lot less visually overwhelming, a lot quicker to visually scan. I can immediately see what requires attention and what does not. Obvious question, of course, how did the dashboard know where to put these red and green uh, dots, light red, uh, dark red, etc.? And so for each metric, we need uh, four kind of thresholds, right? The first is called crisis. And this is the point where if it ever got this bad, we would basically just drop everything until this metric improved. And then we have what I call actionably bad. And so this is the point where we're not just unhappy if it ever gets to this point, we're so unhappy, we're gonna do something, right? We're gonna cancel the project, we're gonna launch an investigation, whatever. And then we have actionably good, where uh, you know, it's kind of the, the mirror opposite, where if it ever got to this point, we would not just be happy, we would be so happy, we, again, we would do something about it, right? We'd promote somebody, we'd move more money into the project, et cetera, and then we have best case. And so this is the point where realistically, how good do we think this metric could ever get? It'll probably never get there, but if it did, we would want the dashboard to go crazy, and that's what basically kind of drives the, uh, the colors of those dots. And of course, anything that is in between actually bad and actually good doesn't get a dot, right? Because it requires no action by definition. And so that's why on a display like this, the majority of metrics actually don't have a dot because that's reality, right? Most metrics actually don't require action most of the time. Another problem with gauges as compared with action dots specifically is that they're just big, right? They take up a lot of space. You know, look at all this room to require to show what? Like one metric. And so uh, something like action dots is gonna be just a lot more compact. And so what that means of course is that we can put a lot more information, a lot more metrics on uh, the dashboard. Gauges also make it hard to spot metrics that require attention. It's like, quick, you know, what requires attention here? Like, you know, what do I need to focus on? It's like, whoa, whoa, lots going on. Obviously with action dots, that's much simpler. I immediately know where to focus, right? Uh, a lot of these don't require attention, but I'm probably gonna wanna pay attention to this one first. Once that one's kind of under control, then I'm gonna focus here, focus here, much quicker. Gauges also don't show whether a metric is in the kind of barely poor range where it's like just below satisfactory or whether it's in a crisis. For example, with sales pipeline value here, I can see, yeah, it's in the red, but if the crisis point is here, that means that this is actually a crisis, right? It's, it's, a, it's a disaster. But what if the crisis point is here or here, right? I don't really know. And so all I can say is that this is somewhere in between below satisfactory and a crisis and I don't actually know where it is. Whereas with action dots, of course, I have this kind of scale between crisis and actually bad. And so I can tell if something is just in, you know, just sort of barely enough to require action or if it's a crisis, I can actually see the difference. Gauges also make it hard to compare metrics with one another, right? Here I have sales by region and here I have my four regions and I'm probably going to want to compare them to see, okay, what was my best region, what was my worst region in terms of quantity of sales. And I can get there, but you know, if I pair some simple bars with action dots, I can see, oh yeah, right away, what, you know, this is my biggest region, this is my smallest region, and oh, uh, the north actually had the highest profit margin. 
I can get there from gauges, but it's just going to be more kind of s slow, essentially. Uh, and also, oftentimes people don't really sort of think of this, but these terms, good, satisfactory, and poor, which are associated with the ranges on gauges, are actually kind of ambiguous, right? Like, what exactly is the difference between good and satisfactory? If the current value of a metric is good, then isn't it also by definition satisfactory? Like when exactly does a metric cease to become satisfactory and become good? Like it doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it. Or what does poor mean, right? Uh, poor could mean a minor problem, a major problem, a crisis, or it could mean the point where, you know, we're below some kind of service level agreement or the point where I don't get my bonus, right? There's all sorts of ways that I could interpret poor and different people will interpret these terms differently. Whereas with action dots, these terms have very specific definitions. Now, people might disagree about, for example, where to put the actionably bad you know, threshold, but at least they're not gonna disagree on what the term actually means, which helps. Gage is also kind of clunky when showing metrics where higher numbers are less desirable, like with defect rate here. Obviously we want the defect rate number to be as low as possible. We don't, we don't want high defect rates. And so using the typical kind of gauge coloring, it doesn't really make sense because as defect rate gets lower, it's gonna get red, or right? if it gets higher, it's gonna turn green, it's kind of the opposite of what we want. We could do this, right? We could flip it around. And so now instead of having zero to 10, I basically going 10% to zero. And so, uh, yeah, at least, you know, if the needle goes to the right, it's going to the green. But now if I have the needle going to the right, it means that it's decreasing, which is kind of the opposite of what people would expect. So that's not ideal. The other possibility is to just flip the colors, right? And so now, uh, of course, if it goes down, it turns green. If it goes up, it goes red, which is good. But the, now it's different, right? Than all the other gauges on our dashboard. This one operates a little differently because the colors are inverted. So it's going to be a little bit clunk, a little bit slow to visually interpret. Whereas with action dots, uh, we have to make a change. When we have metrics where higher numbers are less desirable, we need to basically just flip things around. And so then uh, as defect rate here gets higher, it's gonna go red. If it gets lower, it's gonna go green. And on the dashboard, well, now it makes sense. A low defect rate is flagged as good and a high defect rate is flagged as bad. But the user doesn't really have to worry about what kind of metric this is, whether higher numbers are better or worse. They just still can look for red and green dots. Gauges are also kind of clunky when showing what I call Goldilocks metrics. And those, this might be something like headcount versus plan, where we basically want this metric to be as close to zero as possible, right? We don't want to hire too many people, we don't want to hire too few, just right, hence the, uh, the Goldilocks name. And so again, using the kind of typical gauge coloring doesn't really work because if we hire too many people, it's going to turn green. Ah, okay, well, we can do this, right? So now we have basically two red zones. So if we hire too many people or too few, uh, it's going to turn red, which makes sense. But uh, again, this is now yet a new, a different type of gauge, right? And so if I'm scanning a bunch of gauges on a dashboard, I have to kind of mentally change gears when I see this. With action dots, again, we need to make a small change here. If we have a Goldilocks metric, then we change actionably uh, good to actually bad. And so now we have two actionably bads and we change best case to crisis. So now we have two crises. crises. Uh, and so now if it basically gets too uh, low, it's going to turn red. And if it gets too high, it's also going to turn red, which makes sense for a metric like this. This matters, right? This kind of visual clunkiness problem, it matters because as you can see, you know, if I have different kinds of gauges, like here I have some Goldilocks ones, some where higher numbers are, are worse and some where higher numbers are better. This all just slows things down, like actually quite a bit. And it makes it hard to spot problems. Whereas with action dots, the user doesn't really have to think about any of that. They just look for, you know, dark red, light red dots, dark green, light green dots. Uh, and they don't have to worry about whether it's a Goldilocks metric or a higher is better or higher is worse uh, metric. A couple of other issues with gauges, right? They're kind of clunky when we have several reasons why a metric might require attention. So for revenue here, I care about how revenue compares to external analyst target. Maybe we're a public company, so uh, what uh, Wall Street's target is. We also have an internal target. We also want to compare to last quarter. As you can imagine, especially when there's lots of gauges on a dashboard, this gets pretty busy. Whereas action dots can be kind of stacked, right? I can actually have multiple action dots beside one metric to show, you know, when there's multiple reasons why it requires attention. And this is going to be a lot easier to visually interpret on a dashboard. Sometimes when I show action dots to, to people, they say, oh, well, 
you know, at least a gauge communicates more information because I can see where the various kind of ranges or thresholds are. But I would actually argue that, you know, in this case, Gage is communicating less information because I know it's in the red. But as we saw before, I don't know, is this a crisis? Is it barely poor? Is it something in between? I can't really tell. Ah, OK, well, it's pretty bad. Right. <laughs> and so I would argue that actually action dots communicate uh, more information. I can actually see the difference between a crisis and sort of barely poor. And if I want to see those thresholds, maybe I could put uh, like a sort of pop up here, which shows much more detail. But most of the time, users don't really need this, right? They just need to know, does this actually require attention or not? Another potential disadvantage of action dots that people mention are that it's hard to distinguish between all these kind of subtly different shades of red and green. But actually, action dots work fine with just three or four shades of red, three or four shades of green. We don't need to have a lot of them. And uh, sometimes people say, oh, well, action dots are not colorblind safe because they rely on red and green, just like any other red green color scheme. But um, there are uh, colorblind safe color palettes, which can also be used uh, to pretty much resolve the issue. If you want to know more about action dots and how they compare to various other methods, like uh, showing change versus previous period, for example, uh, I talk about this in my practical dashboards course, which I will be delivering live online in January 2026, in case you haven't been watching this video before then. I'll be delivering my practical charts course uh, in uh, January across four half days, and then also my, of course, practical dashboards course. If you want more information about this, please visit my website, practicalporting.com. Thanks very much for watching.